Hi friends! In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating four different all occasion cards and this is my online card class for February 2022. This class is free for everybody. The PDF tutorial is listed in the description below and of course this class demonstration. And for my customers who placed orders with me during the month of February, uh, you will be receiving the card kits in the mail to complete these cards. You'll have the pre-cut card supplies and you'll have ribbon and embellishments. If you don't have the same stamp sets or products that I use on these cards, feel free to substitute them and use something different. And I hope you enjoyed these cards. Let's start stamping. The first card I'm going to be demonstrating is this one right here. Isn't that sweet? And this is using our new Happy Hedgehogs bundle, which can be found on page 64 of our mini catalog. So the stamp set, which is adorable, comes with the coordinating punch. If you want to buy them together as a bundle and save 10%, that is what I'm going to be using here. Okay, so if you received one of my card kits in the mail, uh, all the supplies are tucked inside an envelope for each card. And these are the supplies you're gonna have for this card. You're actually gonna have more flowers than what I have here. Um, I just pulled out what I need. You need three flowers for this card, but I did put extra in with your kit. This is Just Jade um, cardstock. This measures eight and a half by five and a half folded in half. Then we have the Just Jade cardstock layer. This measures two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And this measures two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So we've got that. The other thing I want to mention is I tucked in uh, five pieces um, assorted pieces of this beautiful New Horizons designer series paper inside each kit as well. Oh my gosh, I am really, really just dig in this paper. I just absolutely love it. So I'm going to be using a piece of this onto my card as well. Now those who received the card kits, I did not pre-cut this paper because I wanted you to be able to choose the piece that you wanted to use on your cards. So because there are a couple of other cards that use this designer series paper too. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this. Now there's not actually just jade, I don't think in this paper, but that's okay. It's going to look really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead slide well let me show you what I've got here actually so I've gone ahead and punched out my hedgehog with soft suede and crumb cake so everybody will have that you're gonna have a piece of our white um, Baker's twine bow there's a little strip of designer series paper this measures two by half for my flowers, I used the strawberry builder punch so I just cut out strips of paper and just used this flower right here there's also some rhinestones, and there will also be um, a holiday gem, the yellow holiday gem in with these kits as well. Okay, so let me cut this piece of paper out. Now this measures four by two and a half. So I'm gonna cut it at the two and a half mark first. Spin it around and cut it at four. And this is going to get glued onto my Just Jade. And one thing you can do on this step, if you choose to, um, you can take your clear wink of Stella and just go along the edge of this. That just adds a fun little something, something, a little glitter, a little glam, a little sparkle. And it will also make this layer pop off the card a little bit more. I do like tone and tone cards, but I wanted that layer just to pop up a bit. So now I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Dimensionals. Next, I'm going to emboss my basic white cardstock. And I'm pulling in one of the folders from the Thanks and Hello um, little bundle. It's on page 155 of the annual catalog. I call it a bundle. It's not a bundle, but you get two of them in, in one package for $11 Canadian. So you do get both of these when you order this. And these are really, really neat because one is thanks and one is hello. And the one with thanks is all the different languages for thanks. And the one for hello is all different languages for hello. I think that's pretty neat. I used hello on my original one, so I'm going to use thanks on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this down. I always say bumps on bottom because that's what's going to give you the raised impression. 
I'm going to line it up so it's straight across the bottom and so that my word thanks is off to the right because my little hedgehog is going to go over here. Now I'm going to bring in my mini stamp and cut and die machine and this is actually 20% off the month of March so that's pretty cool and when you purchase this little machine it also comes with your plates and your platforms that you need to use with it and I love that these fold up and fold down makes it pretty simple to use this is a standard embossing folder it's not one of our thick 3d embossing folders so um, you get two gray plates plate three and plate four that come with this. This one says use with standard embossing folder and this one says use with 3D embossing folder. So we want the standard embossing folder and it shows I need plate number one, which is this, I'm gonna put that in. And then you put your embossing folder on top of this next and then this um, plate on top of that. So that is a very quick, easy reference on how to make your little sandwiches for your machine. And just run it through. And there we have it. Can you guys see that? Isn't that neat? Now I'm gonna make these words pop out just a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring in my Pale Papaya ink and my blending brush. Now Pale Papaya isn't listed as one of the colors in this paper. If you look here on page 43 of the paper, and I love this about our Designer Series paper and our catalogs, is Stampin' Up! has given you quick reference to the colors that are in the DSP. But there are other colors in this, of course. Um, and one of the colors that I'm pulling in, or that I choose to pull in, is some pale papaya, just to kind of brighten this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go on to my word thanks. And I'm going to do a little bit over here as well. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. You could cover the whole thing if you want to. But I'm just going to do a little bit. I guess I'm just kind of going in a diagonal line, really. If you want, you can add more ink on the word you really want to pop off the page. Like so. And I'm going to put some glue along the center because part of this is going to hang off this middle piece here. So I'm just going to put that here. See how that kind of pulls in the color there? So this little strip of designer series paper measures half an inch by two inches. I'm just trying to use up my, my scrap pieces and different things I have. This is from the Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper. It's, a, it's this pattern here. I just wanted to pull some more green in. Um, not to necessarily make it look like grass because that's not a grass image but I just you know that's okay there's no rules I wanted to use it so that's what we're using and that's going to get popped up on stamp and dimensional so I'm just going to cut a piece off the edge of this one that's almost finished and I'm just going to position this on and I'm actually going off this edge just a teeny bit. Okay. Next, I am going to bring in my hedgehog and I've got my stamp already on the block. And I'm going to stamp this with my soft suede. Now, if you uh, are one of my customers receiving this card kit in the mail, if you don't have this stamp set to complete the cards, A, you can contact me or order it through my store if you want it. Um, or B, I'm going to show you a different way you can um, decorate this little punch without the stamp. So I'm taking a black marker and I'm just going over the eye and his nose and his little smile. Okay, that's really off, really off, but that's all right. I'm going to trim this around instead of punching it, punching out another one, because if um, you received one of my kits and you do this at home, <laughs> you're not going to have another punch necessarily. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to fix this. I'm just going to trim around.
Don't want to go too close. All right, there he is. Next, I'm taking my Blushing Bride marker and I'm just going to color in a little cheek. And I'm going to re-ink this in soft suede and stamp right on top of this soft suede image. I'm trying to line it up with the camera in the way. We'll see how that goes. That's good. So that just adds the texture, right? And I missed a little bit there, so I'm just going to stamp that on. And now I'm going to glue this onto my little guy. And I'm just going to line up his ear. And you'll see how everything else falls into place with the line of the stamp image. Okay. So it's, it's not perfect, guys, but it's still stinking cute. I'm just going to trim it a little bit here. Now, I'm going to show you how you can create a little gaffer here without having the stamp. I am going to simply glue this on, just lining it up. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to take my black marker and I'm going to make his little nose. I'm going to make his little eye, his little mouth, and his little cheek. And that is still stinking adorable. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and use this little guy because I know some of you at home that are going to be putting your cards together, you're not going to have the stamp set um, at the time that you get your supplies to make this card and you might want to go ahead and make it. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this guy. And he's going on or she is going on with dimensionals as well. Now what? Now I'm going to add some flowers. Actually, no, I'm going to add some of our little pebbles. Now these are back order at the moment, but those who receive my kits will have um, two rows. Um, so you have two of each color and design in with your kits. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of those on. So it looks like there's pebbles on the little walkway here. You got to be careful which one you put where because, you know, some things just aren't going to look good. If you know what I'm saying. Now I've got really cool pebbles on that little guy. Next, I'm bringing in my piercing mat and bring in my flowers. So, of course, they're double sided, so you could use whichever colors you want go with that and then I'm taking my take your pick tool and just using the round top I'm just gonna push right down in the middle of those flowers just to give them dimension and then I'm gonna put them onto my card with glue dots now I'm going to bring in some rhinestones and I'm going to put a rhinestone in the center of each flower. I'm also going to bring the stamp set back in so I can stamp my sentiment. And I am stamping. It's so nice of you to be so nice. And I'm just going to stamp that with black. I'm going to bring in my butterfly. Also cut from that New Horizons. I think I'm going to use that one. That side. This is from the, it's a retired butterfly punch and I kind of forgot it was retired. It's this one right here, but you can use a die. I'm just gonna put that right there. And then I'm gonna bring in my holiday rhinestones and pick up one of the yellow ones. And then the last thing I'm gonna do on this card is add my ribbon bow. Now 
using some computer paper for the inside of my card to stamp and personalize and there's that card finished. Super sweet, huh? Here's my original, the same, except I've got a different pattern of designer series paper on the back. And of course, I used my stamp on this little guy, whereas this one, um, I showed you how you could make his little face without the stamp if you don't have the stamp. This is the next card we're going to be making, and this may not be new to you. It's called the Pinwheel Technique, um, but I just think it is the coolest um, the coolest card, and I can't wait to share this with you. Easy, easy card to make. So I have a piece of basic white cardstock that I've already cut. It measures four four and a quarter by five and a half when folded and I have a strip of our in symmetry uh, designer series paper glued onto the front this measures two by five and a quarter so I'm going to set that aside then see this is what you're going to find in your envelopes you guys those of you who got in the kits everything's pre-cut for you you've got your ribbon so the little squares there's eight of them measure one and one quarter by one and one quarter and of course they're reversible so you want to have sort of like a solid side and then your detailed side okay then I have two pieces of Calypso coral these both measure two and five eighths by two and five eighths handy dandy to have your grid paper because what you want to do is you want to line up the top tip and the bottom tip so that they're in a straight line like that Okay, then I'm going to add a little bit of glue in the center and make my diamond. So I'm just lining it up so that it's even. And now I'm going to take one of my squares and I'm going to add a little bit of glue in the center. You don't want to cover the whole thing with adhesive at the moment because we're going to um, need to lift up this first flap when it comes time to put our last little square on. So now I'm going to use the reverse side of this paper and I'm going to spin this around and what you're doing is you're lining these little squares up with every tip and leaving just a nice little edge around each piece and you're going to follow around the square doing the same thing all the way around. So I'm going to turn this around and this is getting glued right on top of the last piece. My blue side goes down next. And then my pattern size. Sometimes my paper trimmer doesn't want to play nice and I think I'm cutting things out nice and square only to realize that they're not, but this is actually kind of forgiving. So don't stress if your squares are not exactly one by one and one quarter if they're off a little bit. Okay, so now it's time to do the last square. This is where you're gonna want to lift up these pieces so I'm just going to pull this back a little bit okay I'm going to bring in my last square there's a couple extras in there and I'm going to tuck this in I'm actually just going to line it up just like we've been doing okay and then I'm going to put that down so that's oh and I'm going to put more glue on that too so that's how you get the pinwheel. So beautiful. And then you can go back through and you can add more adhesive as you need to to hold down those little extra corners. Okay. So I'm going to bring my card back in. 
And this is probably, this pattern might be a little bit busy for this particular pinwheel, but that's okay. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to use up the edges of my dimensionals. Nothing goes to waste. So I'm lining up these two tips with the edge of this paper. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in the In Symmetry stamp set so that I can stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to stamp, hey friend, I stamp that in my Knight of Navy. Okay, so I've made a bow using my denim ribbon. I'm going to put this on with the glue dot right in the center. I'm going to put a couple more glue dots on just to hold it in place. And there's my finished card. And I'll show you the original. I really like this one on that yellow because of course it is pretty busy with that pattern but I think they're both super pretty and I stamped thanks so much on this one and other than that they're done exactly the same. This is the third card of this month's class and this is the triple time um, technique with a little bit of a twist because ordinarily if you've made one of these before you know what you would do is you would take uh, your white cardstock you would cut cut this layer this layer and that one and stack the three on top and then stamp them and then cut them and if I've just lost you <laughs> I'll leave the link at the end of this video um, where I show you how you make a triple time card but I wanted to use the designer series paper and I didn't want to waste any so I'm going to show you how I did this triple time card using the designer series paper so first off let's get out our card base. This is Mossy Meadow. Okay, then I have some Mossy Meadow um, pieces in here and I'll give you those measurements in a second. My ribbon and my punches from the double oval punch. So I'm going to put all that stuff aside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down so my card's going to go lengthwise. Um, or is it? No, I'm going to make this card uh, landscape so you can see the difference. So I'm going to cut it down at the four inch mark. You want this piece to measure four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to spin this around. I didn't mean to cut those flowers off. Darn it, that's okay. I'll save that for another card. So now this measures four by five and a quarter. Now this piece is gonna go on here, right? But I want to cut out the next layer. So what I'm gonna do is, cause this is gonna go on top of this, right? So here. I cheat. I show you how I cheat. I'm going to put this right here like that. I'm going to grab my pencil. So if you want to be more precise, you can, but I am just showing you how I found it was quick and easy. So I'm taking this mat and cutting it down. And I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut that rectangle out, but I'm going to go in. So you see this pencil line is actually lined up in the track, but that's not where we're going to cut. So I'm just going to move this about an eighth of an inch and then I'm going to cut and I'm, there's a little line right here. I'm going to line that line on the blade with that pencil mark that I made 
Then I'm going to turn this around, lining that pencil mark up again with the groove here, and move it up an eighth of an inch, or you can do a quarter of an inch, lining this mark up again with that previous cut line going down to the next pencil line. Then I'm going to go up and line it up. Now I'm sure there's some of you who think, Tina, there's an easier way. You know what? We all have our own ways. Do what works for you. I just found this was really quick and easy for me. So that's what I'm passing along. And then line up my last two lines. Okay. So there's my frame. And we're going to do that again in a second. But I'm going to do this step at a time. Oh, and I need to erase that pencil mark. So that's going to get glued on to the front of my card. Make sure I've got it going the right way. Because this is the sky across the top. Okay. And this piece is going to go on with dimensionals. And that just gets put right on top and I'm just making sure it's even all the way around. Okay, so in the next one we're going to do exactly the same way. I'm going to bring in my little panel and bring in this piece. Put the panel down. And I'm just I'm just making sure it's even around all the sides and that it's straight. Draw my pencil line. Line the pencil line up with the groove and move it up about an eighth of an inch. Line the edge up with the pencil line and stop at the pencil line and do that all the way around. that isn't that beautiful with this paper that we have I just love it okay I need to stamp a sentiment on here okay I thought the camera was rolling when I stamped it and it wasn't um, so anyhow I stamped my happy mother's day and I glued this together and now I just have to decide where I want to put this I'm thinking I'm gonna put it actually maybe in the center and then I have my white seam binding bow There's my finished card. And if you wanted to, you could, you know, you could, you could have stamped some birds on this. I didn't think about that. Um, the birds in the horizon stamp set, beautiful on this paper. You could stamp a lot of things. You could have stamped trees. You could have done all, all sorts of things, but I, I didn't. I just kept it like that. Oh, and I should also show you on the original card, um, you'll see I used this sentiment. And all I did is I stamped it in Blackberry Bliss, just pulling out some of that paper. And this sentiment does not fit in the white oval. So what I did is I stamped it again on some scrap paper from this designer series paper and just made a little banner out of it and I just wrapped my ribbon around the first panel and just tied a knot and you can see I've got the birds on there too. Okay 
So this wasn't planned, but I'm going to show you another way you can create this technique with the designer series paper using dies. And I'm pulling in our stitched rectangle dies. Now, if you don't have dies, now you know how you can do it without dies, just by using your paper trimmer. But let's grab another piece of this beautiful paper. And again, I'm gonna trim it down to measure four by five and a quarter. Right on the horizon stamp set since I've got it out. I'm going to stamp my grass. And I'm going to stamp it with early espresso because that's what's sitting on my desk. I'm going to stamp it down here. Oh, I wish I had done that in black. Okay, we're going to we're going to do a redo here. I'm not going to be too worried about whether or not I line this up or not because it's just going to add kind of like a shadow, right? I'm going to do that again. And now I'm going to stamp my birds. I'm also just going to do them in black. What I'm going to do is bring in my dies. And I want a medium and kind of a small, right? So I'm going to put that one for inside. And I think this one for real not, maybe a bit wider, let's see. That one. Okay, and of course you can do this with circles, ovals, whatever floats your boat. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and cut those out with my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. So I'm going to cut an eight and a half by 11 piece of Blackberry Bliss cardstock down at the five and a half mark. And then I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. Ordinarily, I score the whole piece of paper before I cut it, but I'm not doing that today because I am going to be making layers for these two pieces. So this measures four by mm, close to two and a half. So I'm going to cut this a quarter of an inch bigger. So I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter by two and three quarters. So let's just cut that at two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, so that's going to fit on there like so. And then this little guy measures about two and three quarters by hmm, not quite one and a half. So I'm going to cut it at, um, I'm going to cut it at one and three quarters by three. Okay, so I'm going to glue this on. I'm going to trim this one down just a smidgen. Oops. That's why I like the glue. There we go. Okay. And I'm okay that this top layer is a little bit wider than that one. And I'm going to glue this on instead of using dimensional, so you can also see the difference. And I'm going to keep this a really simple card. I'm just going to take the word breathe and I'm going to stamp that in black. And stamp it right here in the middle. Because sometimes we need to remember to just breathe and relax. And there's another very simple way to do this triple time technique using our designer series paper. So this card is super duper uh, cool is not even the word. 
it my jaw dropped when I first saw this card which was designed and created by my friend Wendy Murphy she sent me a picture of it a couple weeks ago and I was so wowed and I asked her if I could use her design um, in a video and to share it with all of you because I think you're all gonna be absolutely wowed when you see this Easter card that Wendy came up with using these diorama dies so I've got everything already pre-cut so this card comes together actually really quick but I'm gonna show you what I did so these are the pieces the only stamping on this card is the sentiment so I've used the sprig punch with um, shaded spruce cardstock I got three of them I have a little piece of the Celebration Marvelous cardstock that I've just cut two by two. That's the yellow, of course. Then I have a circle cut from my circle dies. Then I have two strips of wood pattern designer series paper. This is from the In Good Taste pack. And it's cut at half an inch, I think. Let me just, let me just quickly check. Uh, three quarters of an inch wide and this measures three and this measures two in length so you can see what I did with the dies here okay so I've got um, smoky slate and basic gray so for the smoky slate I used and you can't really go wrong when you're picking your um, your dies for this you don't want to be super super big yeah, so, okay, so I used this one, okay, which is about five inches in length. And then for this die, I used this one, and this one is about four inches in length, okay? So after I cut those out, as you can see, I ran them through my die cutting machine with the circle die or actually first what I did is I just trimmed off the edge so let me show you that I just so happened to have a couple right here so all I did bring my paper trimmer in and I was not specific in how I did this you guys so you can have your die going this way that way like whatever whatever makes you happy I'm gonna go this way and all I did is I just trimmed off a little bit. Then what I did is I put my circle die on. So it was just go going past it just a little bit and cut that out. And then I did the exact same thing here. And you don't have to line these two pieces up when you do that. You can do them one at a time um, or together. No rules. It's all good. Okay, and so you've got everything cut, ready to go. My card base is crumb cake. So I'm just gonna fold that in half, get a good crease. I'm gonna bring in a piece of my New Horizons designer series paper. And there's so many patterns in this designer series pack that work beautifully with this card. So I'm gonna cut this lengthwise or widthwise like this is gonna be landscape I want this to measure four by five and a quarter I don't want to cut all the grass off this time around okay so now I'm gonna take some dimensionals and put them behind this dark piece and now I'm gonna line up my two circles like so and then I'm going to take this little piece add a little bit of glue and then just glue that behind okay so I just glued this little piece on I just thought why not since you cut them off why not use it right okay so now I'm going to take this piece I'm going to put a little bit of glue around this circle I'm going to take this Piece here and just glue it behind okay and now this gets put on my card I'm not gonna put it right down at the bottom I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap here now I'm gonna make my cross okay. 
and I kind of want that to go right here. And I'm going to glue this on in the middle. Making sure it's not coming off the card. Okay. I'm going to take these sprigs and I'm going to glue them on. Inside a little bit. And then I'm going to glue this. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on, on the one side and then a dimensional on the other because this is raised up, right? So I want that to be raised up and this part to be flush. So I'm just gonna put that on like so. And I'm gonna cut this and add a third twig, third stem. I'm actually going to put a dimensional on each end of this here to keep it raised up. I'm going to take my black marker to draw four circles for the nails on the cross, like that. And now I need my sentiment. So I'm going to use my Easter Blessings. And of course, this is a darker, um, a darker pattern. So I'm not too sure how that's going to come out. I think I'm going to emboss this in gold, actually. So I'm just going over with my embossing buddy. And to finish the card, I'm bringing in more of these really cool pebbles. And I'm just going to position them across the bottom. There's a completed card. And here's the original card that I made using the same New Horizons design and series paper, but just a different background. They're both super, super beautiful. I love this Easter card. Thank you, Wendy, for the inspiration. I'll um, insert a picture of Wendy's card that she designed. And I'm just blown away with her <laughs> with her idea for this card and I love your card Wendy thank you for sharing it with all of us and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial for this awesome awesome Easter card I hope you enjoyed today's cards I hope you got lots of great inspiration and uh, seen some ideas you're gonna want to try some new techniques and again, the PDF tutorial is available to everyone listed in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take care and happy stamping.